you, and uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I think it's, uh, for me, it's a great pleasure and honor to speak after Herbert. I think that Herbert has perhaps uh, been there kind of for our interface, not only representing the DT research and innovation, but also, I think, widely the whole of the commission, whenever I think that we have been really making the plans, and I think that the preparations for even this conference, but also, I think, the kind of industrial research innovation, I think that has been kind of a very instrumental. Like if someone in the civil service can really contribute to this kind of exercise, I guess that it has been Herbert for sure. And I think we are very happy to have a close collaboration with him. And I think that that's uh, something that, as he was pointing out, I think that uh, if uh, the industry or policy has been a bit of the kind of a dirty word for, let's say, in the past, I think there's a full recognition in today's world that I think the industry has to really play its role for the future of the European Union. And I guess that whenever uh, the college adopted the kind of our industrial policy update 2012, and I think that it set that kind of a political objective that uh, the industry should contribute 20% of the European GDP instead of 158 at that time, unfortunately 2013, we have been sliding backwards still I think the figure is somewhere 15.3. Uh, and I guess that, that we have to bounce back. And I think there is a certain kind of a new awakening, new type of uh, the kind of a perhaps uh, way to see what the industry should contribute and how it should really play the game. I think we have uh, made kind of an industrial uh, policy uh, research and then let's say surveys. And the last uh, kind of a report that we are having on the Member States Competitiveness Report that was just published a couple of uh, days or weeks ago, I think it was uh, having useful insights how we see the current situation in manufacturing in Europe. It uh, shows clearly that I think that the Europe has comparative advantage in about two-thirds of uh, the industrial sectors. And accounting for around 75% of uh, the EU manufacturing output and I think that clearly states that I think that the comparative advantages that we are having in Europe are very much focused on complex and high quality product segments. And if we then try to uh, see where I think that we have really to uh, put our uh, policy emphasis, I think that it's also recognized in, uh, as one of the four key action lines in our industrial policy is innovation and investment in innovation. That's the compulsory recipe for sustainable reindustrialization of Europe. And advanced manufacturing uh, uh, technologies are one of uh, those priority areas for such investments. New technologies have the potential to change the industrial landscape and make Europe more competitive. The European Commission believes that advanced manufacturing and sustainable production processes particularly have that potential. We must make sure that the demand for new manufacturing technologies is not hampered by adverse framework conditions. And we have been looking for that kind of regulatory environment and other kind of regulatory conditions that we are putting in place, not only on the European Union level, but also on national level. And I think we have to see them as a big picture. We must be enabled to reach its full potential and to deliver more efficient and more sustainable manufacturing production in Europe. We decided to focus on advanced production technologies as they have, like key enabling technologies, uh, a cross-cutting nature, providing a crucial input for process innovation in any manufacturing sector. Our objective is to increase the competitiveness of the EU's manufacturing industry as a whole. And the European Commission Task Force, composed of different services in, uh, and in Commission, is at work at the moment really to uh, assess how to put the bits and pieces in place. Its mandate is to identify measures that could foster development and adoption of advanced manufacturing and clean production technologies by European industry in the short term. This is to be seen in the context of the new industrial uh, sorry, multi-annual financial framework 2014-2020 without the need of our legislative proposals. 
The task force has been widely consulting uh, member states, industry, and other stakeholders. And the next public hearing is already, I think, this week in Brussels. The aim of the task force is uh, really to have the report ready by the end of this year, identifying the actions uh, in three different areas relevant to all of you and the topics of the conference, namely accelerating the commercialization of advanced manufacturing technologies. Secondly, stimulating demand for advanced manufacturing technologies. And thirdly, reducing skill shortages and competence deficits in manufacturing. After its report, the task force will continue its work in a reinforced partnership with industry to address more medium to long-term issues to enhance the competitiveness of European advanced manufacturing industry. And this is perhaps the moment to ask everybody to join the community. <coughs> Herbert already described what's in Horizon 2020 and uh, how Horizon 2020 and then other EU funding opportunities for innovation are offering for manufacturing today. I don't want to go any detail, but I think that perhaps a couple of words and observations. I think that uh, whenever we look at the design of the, uh, let's say, former uh, framework programs, I think that uh, we got certain kind of an impression that, of course, there is a declining interest and participation of the industries. And I think that comparing our uh, kind of approach with uh, our competitors like US, Korea, Japan, I think that uh, one element that was perhaps missing or where we were a bit sighing away was investing more in the innovation closer to the market. And I think that perhaps that's very much now kind of an opportunity and an occasion really to test in the Horizon 2020 context that uh, how we can do that in a best possible way. The new EU funding landscape for uh, next seven years, particularly Horizon and COSME and regional funds are going to provide substantial funding opportunities along the whole innovation uh, chain. And I think that uh, <clears throat> that's where I think that uh, those billions of euros that uh, Herbert was referring to are now, I think, available. There will be many projects closer to the market with testing, demonstrating, pilot lines, large-scale validation. There will be also sitting event uh, support for demand-side measures, such as public procurement of innovation and pre-commercial procurement. Innovation policy is the most effective if the supply push and demand pull are combined together. Around 20% or 17 billion euros for uh, industrial leadership in Horizon 2020 is a significant amount of the money, and if well spent, I guess that it can really make the difference. And I think that uh, innovation actions in advanced manufacturing, advanced materials, nanotechnologies, uh, biotechnology, ICT, and cross-cutting kits are crucial for industrial leadership. And of course, I think that uh, industry-driven European technology platforms, including Manufuture, are really, I think, that kind of uh, our interface and interlocutor really making sure that I think that our plans and work programs are really meeting the kind of uh, expectations. And I think that we are having the roadmaps for research and innovation in manufacturing technologies. We need to improve our industrial exploitation of the research and innovation. We have to be much faster to the market and we need to leverage private investment. Therefore, Public-private partnerships will be an important tool to develop research and innovation for agendas jointly with the industry. Factories of the future will continue to develop advanced manufacturing technologies. And uh, then uh, we established new PPP like Spire for sustainable process industry, an uh, excellent example of close link between uh, the objectives of leadership and competitiveness of the EU industry and of finding the solutions for societal challenges such as scarcity of resources, climate change, energy efficiency. Innovation can turn these challenges into the market opportunities. The first work program of Horizon 2020 
is currently in preparation and the first calls will be launched in mid-December, like Herbert was uh, indicating. And we count very much now, I think, there is a strong interest and participation from the industrial players in this program. And I think we have also then to turn our focus on the role of the national policies. And we have to make sure that I think that there's a high quality national policies in line what we are now planning to do together in Europe. Member States' competitiveness report shows that industrial performance and innovation performance among the member states varies a lot. However, report also reveals that there are a number of promising policies undertaken by member states which can serve as an example for national policy makers. National policies can foster the development of modern industry solutions mainly by ensuring an innovation-friendly business environment. They can improve coordination between businesses by providing trusted and impartial platforms and clarifications. There are good examples, best practices, and one of what I could raise in here is the British National Industrial Symbiosis Program that has been, I think, the, over the seven years of its existence, achieved around one billion pounds of cost savings, generating almost one billion in additional sales and reused 38 million tons of materials. And there are plenty of similar type of the best practices available. And I think that uh, <clears throat> it's a question of we are really learning from each other how to do it. Together we have to size the momentum. Industry policy is high on the European agenda. And I think there will be the kind of, uh, there were already discussions among the ministers in the Council, and I think now we are really planning and heading for the February European Council, where the heads of state or government are really addressing industrial competitiveness, and that's also the chance for this conference to give the elements and the messages. Thank you.